Welcome back. Now we bring you Israel and the Middle East, a segment of Shalom Jerusalem, sponsored by the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. Here's your host, Esther Allen. Hello and welcome to Shalom Jerusalem. I'm Esther Allen. Our guest today is Dr. Wayne Hilsden. Dr. Hilsden has been the pastor and president of King of Kings Ministries, which is in Jerusalem, Israel. He is also the co-founder of the Israel College of the Bible, which has trained over 1,500 Israeli citizens. We are so thankful for Pastor Wayne's investment in the next generation of leaders, and I'm honored to have him as our guest today. Thank you, Pastor Wayne, for being with us. What a privilege to be with you, Esther. Thank you. One of your sermons that I listened to um, actually taught me that the New Testament references Israel 70 times, and the Old Testament of course, has over 3,000 references to Israel. And so Israel is really not a minor issue when it comes to the scriptures. Could you speak to that for us? Well, Israel is a central nation of all, among all the nations of the earth. The God who's Israel from the beginning to be an agent of blessing to all the nations of the earth. The promise came to Abraham and it was repeated to uh, his son Isaac, and then to Jacob, that God would make them a blessing so that they can bless all the other nations of the earth. And so even Jesus in the New Testament said to the Samaritan woman that salvation is from the Jews. So if that's true, then Israel is central to the message of the entire scripture. Mm. Pastor Wayne, how are you passing this torch of truth, as you call about Israel, to Western pastors specifically? Well, we formed an organization five and a half years ago called FIRM, which stands for Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries. And one of the primary tasks of FIRM is to connect evangelical born again leaders with ministry leaders in Israel so that they develop a relationship ultimately partnership in kingdom work, in bringing the gospel to the nation of Israel. And we're using that platform, of firm, uh, to be able to send this message of the importance of Israel and God's ongoing promises that he will fulfill for the Jewish people. And so we are doing it through social media. We have an annual conference as well every June in Jerusalem called the Jerusalem Encounter. We invite these leaders along with their uh, congregants and those in their sphere of influence to come and hear this message and get passionate about God's purposes for the nation of Israel. Pastor Wayne, you also teach that with replacement theology, one of the things that happens is uh, people have a tendency to look at the Bible as an allegory instead of reading it literally. Could you explain a little bit more about this to us? Well, if we believe that God wants to reveal himself and that he's not totally hidden in mystery, then God would reveal himself in words that you could take at face value. You don't have to be a great theologian. You don't have to be uh, some spiritual giant to understand what he is saying to us. Uh, he wants us to be saved. He wants us to know him and fellowship with him forever. But many theologians have done gymnastics to take what... I would say is generally literal text, uh, taking the text at face value and turning it into um, a mystery and looking behind the text and trying to find some kind of uh, symbol, some kind of uh, ethereal truth. And I could give you many examples. And we call this allegorization, where you spiritualize the scriptures. Rather than look at what the meaning is from, from face value, you look behind the text and uh, I can give you an example. In fact, uh, Origen, one of the church fathers in the third century, was uh, teaching on, on uh, John chapter 21, where Jesus is coming down from the Mount of Olives, that great Hosanna, uh, as he's coming into Jerusalem. And they're laying down their clothing, they're laying down their palm branches in worship. And uh, he came down on a donkey and the colt of a donkey. And Origen uh, looked at this larger animal, the donkey, and, uh, and said that symbolizes the Old Testament, a much more harsh word uh, to humanity. Uh, but the, 
colt of the donkey, that younger, more gentle animal, uh, is representative of the New Testament. And if you can take uh, what would be a literal, Jesus is coming down literally on these two animals, uh, and, and turn that into some kind of spiritual truth, then you can make the Bible say anything you want. And what's happened is people that have come to uh, write off Israel as passe, uh, as a relic, and not having any more relevance uh, to, to God's purposes, uh, can make the church Israel instead of the literal nation, the, the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as Israel. And uh, that has consequences, and uh, unfortunately, it's led to anti-Semitism, anti-Judaism, and uh, unfortunately, given the church, um, the church has really had a poor testimony among the Jewish people because they've rejected the Jewish people. The theory is, if Jesus came to his own people as their Messiah and they rejected him, then God would then reject them as his people and he would turn to another people and that would be the church and then Israel uh, has no more relevance no more purpose uh, in God's economy. Pastor Wayne it's important for us to talk about these conversations because certainly the culture at large is talking about racism but as you mentioned I mean is this um, a symptom of anti-Semitism uh, that we have allowed to permeate through the church. We have, and it's one of the saddest uh, stories in history. And we're still uh, facing that today. Anti-Semitism is raising its ugly head again. Uh, we see it especially in Europe, but it's now moving into North America, right in our, our day. Pastor Wayne, this might be one of the most important questions of this entire series, in my opinion, because when people like me learn uh, to read the Bible literally and to take Jesus's words literally and to look at the covenants that are unconditional, you can't unsee these things in scripture. And so you become very passionate about it. Um, but how do we as believers encourage unity in the body of Christ? Um, even among theological differences. I know that you have an article talking about divided, we are doomed. So how do you encourage unity among believers in this time? Well, first of all, we're answering Jesus' prayer. Uh, Jesus prayed in John 17 to the Father that we would be one, like he and the Father are one, so that the world will know that he sent him into the world and that he loves us. So it's critical for the authenticity of the gospel to be unified as the church, as believers. Uh, it, uh, it, it proves the fact that the gospel is not just theory, but it works. That people from many different races and uh, cultural backgrounds in the Messiah can come together and be one. So it's, it's critical to the effectiveness of the gospel. We must be one. Now, how do we do that? Well, I believe a local congregation is to be a, a laboratory of, dem of the demonstration of peace and unity that we can have. And I love it when it's multiracial. I, I love it when it's multigenerational. And, and we, we get along with, with one another. Yeah, we might have differences. And sometimes we have to agree to disagree on certain issues, but we can agree that Jesus is Lord, that Yeshua is the Messiah. And that breaks down every dividing wall. You know, Paul talks about this in Ephesians chapter two about Jew and Gentile. And through the cross, Jesus broke down the wall of partition, that dividing line. You know, in the temple, in, in Herod's temple, there was actually a wall and the Gentiles could go only so far. They could not enter fully into the worship of the Jewish people at the temple. Well, Jesus has come and broken down that wall. And now we can be one, whether we're Jew or Gentile, black or white, no matter what uh, social status we are, even what political party we might get behind. In Jesus, we can be one and we must be one for the gospel's sake. Pastor Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but I, I believe that you are a Gentile believer. I don't think that you are a Jewish believer. And so I would love for you to just speak to um, the notion that people sometimes think 
um, being pro-Israel is anti-Palestinian or believing that God has promises still for the Jewish people is uh, not being sensitive to Arab Christians. Um, so can you speak to why Israel really should be a unifying um, subject for believers? Well, I can t tell you just from personal testimony that as a Gentile, uh, God has put in my heart a special love for the nation of Israel. I, I kind of think if I could identify with a biblical character, it would be, it would be Ruth and her relationship to her mother-in-law, the Jew. But Ruth said, I'm going with you back to Judah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with you through thick or thin. Uh, I'll die where you die, and I'll worship your God. And uh, so that's, that's been my commitment to the nation of Israel. And um, we need to stand with Israel. In fact, Paul says in, first, in Romans uh, chapter 15 that just as the Jewish people shared with us Gentiles spiritual things, we owe it to them in material things. And Paul was taking up an offering to bring back to Jerusalem to the saints in Jerusalem, the believers, the Jewish believers that uh, were experiencing a lot of poverty. And there was a famine at that time as well. And, uh, but... Gentiles have a role to play. I, I love the passage in Jeremiah that talks about Gentiles lifting the Jewish people up in their arms and taking them back to the land uh, of their uh, the land of promise. Um, there's so many reasons why Jews and Gentiles need to work together as one. And for Gentiles to honor and thank the Jewish people for the, for the spiritual blessing they are to us. Pastor Wayne, thank you for your teaching, your example, for unifying believers across Israel. Thank you for your love for Israel and the Jewish people. And um, please visit FIRM's website, Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries, and stay in touch with us at JerusalemAlliance.com.